Hello everyone, thank you. It's lovely to be back here at Disability Wales. Um, as Rian said, I'm going to be talking about the piece of research that I conducted, which looked at um, was working with peer researchers and sort of developing future strategies of how we can co-produce disability research. Um, so as Rian just sort of mentioned really, this project was funded by Drill um, and it's also part of a Four Nations research project. So each of our partner organisations in Northern Ireland, Scotland and England, all, we all looked at um, a piece of research together, um, looking at sort of the negative attitudes towards disabled people in the UK, and ours featured on co-production and peer researchers. Um, so for those that um, are not aware with the term co-production, you usually um, quite mainly see co-production within health and social care sector where members of the public are engaged in how services and facilities are run and delivered in their local area. Um, within sort of disability research, traditionally, it's carried out by non-disabled people, which is a, a shame really because that means that the voices and the experiences of disabled people are missing from missing from the data, missing from the research process. And the term peer research really means that the researchers have a lived experience of the research subject. So for example, within our research, the peer researchers were disabled people who had had either previous experience of research or little experience, and then they were trained as part of the project then to be able to conduct research. So just to look at our research project, we had the main question was what has Drill learnt um, from working with peer researchers as part of the Drill funded research projects? And what we really wanted to know were what were the benefits that the research projects found about involving disabled people within the research process? And then also what were the challenges? Um, and then how these challenges, so the solutions that the projects had come up with then to overcome these challenges? As at Disability Wales, as, as we all know, we want to be, we believe that disabled people should be involved in disability research and it makes a huge impact to the whole research process. And so with Drill, it's such a unique project where disabled people are required to be involved in the research process. We wanted to take learning from that, so hopefully then in the future we can make sure that more disabled people then are involved within research and disability research. So our project team... Um, so our research was co-produced, so I worked with a project reference group who were really instrumental in helping me de de develop and design the research. Um, the project reference group were made up of different representatives, so that involved people from the projects that participated in our research, also from our project partners as well, so representatives from HOLLY, which is co-production network, and the Wales School for Social Care Research and also members from the Wales National Advisory Group who helped, who have helped sort of deliver the drill project within Wales um, over the past four years. And they were, they were really, really, really helpful to the project. So they helped me to then decide which projects um, would participate within our drill research. They also helped me to design the questions that I do, did for the interviews and for the focus groups. Um, they helped to analyse the data once the research, once I'd gone out and done the research. And then they helped to look over the report and to check the report and give their feedback as well. Um, and a bit of future work that might happen with the reference group is that they're going to write a journal, so an academic journal, um, with the research findings that will go out to academics and universities across the country as well and the world. So that's something to look forward to as well in the future. And then um, sort of moving on to sort of the methods and how I carried out the research. So initially, 12 projects were invited to take part in the research project. And those were 12 projects who had been funded through the drill programme. Um, and we wanted to make sure that the projects that we picked represented sort of the diversity of the drill project. So we wanted different age groups, we wanted different genders as well, we wanted a, a different impairment groups. So we wanted to know the experiences of people living with different impairments and health conditions, um, and also people with different ethnicities and social class backgrounds. Um, 
So, unfortunately, out of the 12 projects that were invited, six projects agreed to take part in the research, which is really great. Um, and these projects, there was at least one project from each of the nations. So one project from Wales, England, Northern Ireland and Scotland as well that took part in the research. So hopefully then we covered sort of the whole breadth and diversity of the drill programme as well. And those will be reflected in our findings, which I'll talk about next. Um, and then I carried out interviews and focus groups. So the whole project teams were then invited to take part in a focus group with the whole team um, or one-to-one -one interviews as well, which most of them I carried out face-to-face. -face. Um, so I had a lovely trip up, trip up to Glasgow and um, interviewed two projects there and then um, other, other teams as well just because of reasons of maybe for travel and time, um, I conducted interviews over the phone as well. So try to make it convenient and accessible to everybody to meet their needs as well. So then just to sort of move on to the research findings, so the main bit of the research and what we found out. So the first question, the sort of opening question that I asked people was, what does co-production mean to them? Because for some people it is quite a new term and it's important that, well I felt that it's important that people had an understanding um, and this had quite a mixed response really. So some people had never heard of the term before, um, whereas other people who had a bit more experience kind of understood the terms of co-production and what it meant. Um, but generally people felt, um, so that was disabled people and non-disabled people, felt that co-production meant working in equal partnership. Um, people with different knowledges, different experiences coming together um, and working together on a particular project, which is really great that they sort of had the same shared idea of what co-production means. Um, and also it was vital for, for all of the participants felt that disabled people should always be involved in disability research. Um, and they felt that if you took disabled people away from being involved in disability research, then it would it, would, it wouldn't have the same value, it wouldn't have the same emphasis um, if non-disabled people were creating all of the disability research that's going on. Um, and then the next finding that we looked at was, um, the next question, sorry, that we asked was about the term peer researcher. So I'm not sure how familiar everyone is here with the term peer researcher, but it's quite a new term, um, and sometimes people don't really know what it means. I mean, I hadn't really come across it before um, this research, to be honest. Um, so I asked them what they thought of the term peer researcher and what it meant to them. Some people liked the term. Some people felt that being called a peer researcher meant that you know they had the skills of a researcher, but it also showed to people that they had the lived experience as well, which they felt would make people, so particularly disabled people, more likely then to take part in the research. Um, Whereas other people felt that having a term a peer researcher and then, for example, academic researcher made people with lived experience, um, so put people with lived experience on a lower level to maybe academic researchers where their experience wasn't valued because maybe they didn't have academic qualifications. So one group actually we found to sort of get over that, um, that issue of the different levels of status just called all researchers co-researchers. So no matter what their background, if they had lived experience, if they had academic qualifications, they were all just called co-researcher and were just seen as equal, um, having equal experience, equal background um, and equal say in the projects, which was quite, was quite nice, quite liked the way that um, they came up with that idea. Um, and then we moved on, so the next finding was um, just sort of looking at the benefits as well. So the benefits of involving people with lived experience. And there were quite a lot of benefits, but I'll just talk about a few now. Um, so the main, main benefits I found were that it added extra value and extra richness to the project. Um, and this was highlighted by one of the academic researchers who said having people, so um, that particular researcher had had written out the questions and had a plan for how they wanted to carry out the research. But when they, look, when they as a project team, reviewed the, reviewed the plan, reviewed the questions, people with the lived experience, so the disabled people involved, said, actually, that's not going to work. That, that doesn't make sense to me, and I don't think that will make sense to other disabled people as well. So then they changed the questions, they changed the approach they were going to use, and the feedback they had from the participants was that it made a lot more sense to them. They enjoyed it 
they enjoyed it more, it was more applicable to them than the original way that the academic researcher wanted to carry it out. Um, also, in sort of in talking about the research, so once they've had the findings and the report was given, when they had people with lived experience actually talking at conferences, talking about the research, they they discussed the research in a way that was really emotional, in a way that the crowd, the audience could really understand, which the academic researchers felt that they just couldn't, they couldn't do that, they couldn't deliver it in the same way. Um, and we also found as well that sort of participants, so disabled people themselves who wanted to get involved in these research projects, were more likely um, to become involved, so to become participants, if they knew the researcher was disabled themselves and had that shared experience. Um, so that's another sort of interesting um, benefit that we found as well. And then moving on to sort of the individual benefits. Um, so many, so as I said, I interviewed six projects and out of those six projects, at least four projects had people who, so um, that's disabled people, peer researchers, who then went on to paid employment after that, which is a great result. It kind of showed, it showed that, so their involvement with the drill project and having sort of training on research skills, having training on independent living skills, then enabled them to go on and get full-time employment afterwards, which is a lovely sort of outcome for drill. Um, there was also particular benefits to people said that when, to say people themselves this is, when they were involved in the drill project, it gave them a sense of purpose. So they said in their day, daily lives, they kind of, you know, they just carried on and they're sort of, they're, as disabled people, they weren't generally listened to, they, were, they felt ignored, but being part of a project and being, you know, being able to deliver and actually say the focus of the project and how it would be carried out, they felt valued, um, which they hadn't experienced before in their lives. That's, that's really important as well. Um, and also people, so one particular participant as well said that after being involved in the research, they wanted to now go back to education, um, so back to university, and then they wanted to then take on their own research course, so to follow a research degree, so that in the future, they can carry out their own research as a disabled person, instead of carrying out research that somebody else had done, um, someone else had designed as well. So it's really nice to see that sort of involvement with drill then made sort of empowered disabled people to actually then want to go on and deliver their own research and become more involved as well. Um, and then sort of the last finding that we had was around the challenges. So these were mainly sort of the challenges in co-producing research and there was quite a few of these as well that we identified. Um, the main challenge was that sort of projects had maybe underestimated the time. Um, so the time, the extra time that they might take or might need to, to train people who hadn't had previous research experience. Um, so that involves actual formal training, but then also time for shadowing as well, um, and making sure that the researchers had were felt comfortable and confident to go out um, and do interviews or focus groups by themselves. So that led to time delays as well. Um, there was also issues, particularly within smaller um, disabled people's organisations, where they didn't have, because they were working in smaller teams, they didn't have capacity to actually be able to go out and do the research. Um, so they didn't have, um, so that's actually members of staff to be able to do the research, but also the expertise in the smaller organisations, they didn't have a member of staff who could dedicate their time just to research. So it meant now there was a kind of there was a lack then, there was lack of um, lack of resources, lack of capacity within the disability sectors for disabled people to actually carry out their own research. Um, and then finally, the there was quite a few financial challenges. So particularly with people who received welfare benefits, um, because the the nature of the drill pro project is that they might be employed for six months so they'd have to come off their benefits for six months and then once the contract ended then people would have to reapply for welfare benefits um, and some people felt that the risk of coming off the benefits to hopefully get back on at the same level once the project had finished was too high so instead of being paid people decided to to volunteer their time to the project so that led to some sort of that led to some disabled people being paid some people not being paid and there was kind of that sort of 
inequality there within the payments because of the fear that people had. Um, and this also led to some people working anonymously. So at the end of project report that they wrote, there would be a list of the researchers' names, but some people decided not to have their name included because they had the fe they felt um, they feared that if the DWP, so the Department for Work and Pensions, found out that they were working or volunteering, that they would that would affect their benefits, and they didn't want to take that risk, um, which is is a finding that I didn't really I hadn't really occurred to me before um, meeting that, but it was something that was quite common amongst disabled people that were receiving welfare benefits um, in the project. So then. Looking at, um, so then after kind of looking at all of those findings, um, working with the project reference group that I mentioned, we came up with a, a list of, sort of suggestions or solutions to look at for the future so that we can make sure that when disabled people are involved in research, um, that the process is made smoother. Um, and we can kind of, that the process is made smoother and so more disabled people can be involved in the process. So the first thing, um, so the first recommendation was to define co-production. So this is, I well, this is important to make sure that when you're working in a new team, working in a research project or any team um, that has lots of different partners, to make sure that everybody has an understanding, a joint understanding of how they're going to work together. So this might differ between each team, but if you have a joint understanding that hopefully then that will make sure that everybody can work together in an equal say um, and that the power is distributed amongst everybody and this will hopefully avoid any issues in the future as well. Um, the next recommendation was to make sure that or to increase the, capacity, the research capacity within the disability sector. Um, which is really important if we as disabled people want to be able to lead and deliver our own research and have our experiences heard from our, by ourselves, we have to be able to, we have to have the, the knowledge, um, the research knowledge and the capacity to be able to do that. So this could be through, um, say, funding, pots of funding from funding organisations or research organisations specifically for disabled people's organisations or individual disabled people to be able to carry out their own research because um, it is a costly process and if you are a smaller charity it might not be something that you can afford um, compared to the other services that you run. Um, and the next thing was to... Um, go on, on the, line, I think. Um, the next one is to... So within funding, um, within research funding, to make it mandatory that any, so for example with the dual project, any research project on um, looking into the disability sector or looking at disabled people has to involve disabled people in that process. Um, as it's really important that we have our voices heard, that we have a chance to actually input our ideas, our lived experience, our expertise, living as disabled people into the research process. Because the dual project has shown that it makes a huge difference and that it can work and it works when it's done, it works really, really well. Um, so that would be a recommendation then to the funding bodies. Um, the next one is to value lived experience because um, one thing that our research found was that the lived experience of disabled people wasn't always valued. So if you were an academic researcher, then people, the generally people felt that they were sort of a higher level, their higher status as they'd achieved those academic qualifications. But if you had, if you're a researcher with lived experience, it was seen as having sort of a lower status, um, which is not, which is not correct. It's not always the truth. So it's really important that, particularly within maybe academics, so within universities or um, education, that they value lived experience. They value the expertise and the knowledge that us as disabled people are bringing to the project as well. Um, and then the final one, the final recommendation, is for institutional change. Um, so this is mainly to do with, within sort of large organisations, um, linked to sort of valuing lived experience, it's to, to make sure that they, they do value disabled people and do value our experience, um, d even if, if we don't have the academic qualifications, to value what we're bringing to the table um, and what we're bringing to the whole project, research projects as a whole. Um, and this, so I didn't mention it before, but this was 
this is particularly within large organisations, um, the different levels of pay rates as well. We found that within some projects, people, so academic researchers had one pay level, and then peer researchers, so same people um, with or without previous research experience were paid less because maybe they didn't have those academic qualifications, so they weren't seen on an equal level. Um, so particularly for more, say, people to be involved in, um, so in disability research, it's really important that those institutions, those organisations change, you know, change the way that they change their procedures and their policies to make it more equal um, for disabled people being involved in their project as well. Um, so that is kind of everything that I have to say today. Um, and I think most of you have been given the research report. So what I've gone through today is just a really brief summary of um, what's in this report. So if you'd like to know more, then have a look in this report. Um, hopefully we can answer your questions for you. So thank you for your time. <laughs>